Welcome to Series 2 of The Core with Nathan Fowkes, hosted by Bobby Chu. Nathan Fowkes has been one of the top concept artists in the entertainment industry for over 20 years. His credits include The Prince of Egypt, How to Train Your Dragon, and Wonder Park. In this mini-series, Nathan will get to the core of concepts and ideas that he teaches in his schoolism classes. We hope you enjoy it. Hey Nathan, thank you so much for your time. I want to ask you about depth in paintings. I love the paintings where you feel like you can literally walk deep inside the painting itself. Artists at your level are masters of creating the illusion of space. So I was hoping that you can share some tips for the viewers that they can perhaps try themselves or, you know, help them create and understand how to create depth in a painting. Yeah. So let me, let me start with something of what not to do, um, which I probably, probably is an all, always good place to start to kind of focus our efforts. So one thing that happens all the time with students in general, my students and me as a student, absolutely guilty. You know, we, we all, we so badly want our work to look good. We're in this to do work that we're proud of, you know? And so there's this big temptation, especially as students, we do some bad sketches and bad paintings. We're embarrassed. They, you can't even tell what it is. And we set those aside, throw them away, and don't want anyone to ever see them. And then maybe we, some of them come together. Some of our studies come together, and we'll turn those in, put them up on the wall or in the virtual classroom and uh, to be critiqued. But there's something in there that we're proud of, and we aren't humiliating ourselves. That's understandable. And it also is going to make your learning curve much longer and much more difficult because my students say to me all the time, oh, I did a bunch more, but they were they they were a disaster. So I didn't turn them in. And I always say, don't do that. Those are the pieces that you need to turn in because we've got to figure out why did it go wrong? You threw it out and did not find a solution. And so now next time that problem comes up, you're going to do it all over again. You're going to have another disaster on your hands. And what I found is those images, the quote unquote disasters, when we do take a look at them, often it takes a surprisingly few amount of strokes to pull it together. And that's one of my favorite things as we do our critiques in my, my classes and in my, you know, my landscape sketching class is a painting that the student thinks is a disaster. And all it needs is a few strokes of perspective to give it a structure and a depth. You just find something that has perspective in it. You might even cheat. Uh, maybe you painted a place and you cheat that there is a log, you know, maybe a fallen log that leads into the image, even if there wasn't really one. Or even better yet, you find something that you can kind of tweak into the perspective of your scene. And then all of a sudden, the blob that you were embarrassed about has depth and thereby has a structure and the audience starts feeling like they can move into it. And then you, uh, there are trees and the tree was a disaster because it's just blobs of paint. You think about the geometry. It's not a tree. It's a sphere and it's a cylinder. And you just push a little bit of three dimensional emphasis into that tree. And you take that blob and it just becomes a little bit more understandable with clarity and artistry happening in it. And then maybe you're doing a sketch, you're, you're horrible painting. It was this vast space and you just completely lost it. You look for overlap anywhere you can put an overlap. Here's a thing. And then there's a thing behind that. And then there's a thing behind that. And then the thing behind that. And even if you have, uh, low contrast, uh, maybe in shadows or, or something, you can still overlap any situation. You can overlap elements. And if one thing feels like it's behind another, boom, it has depth. Something else behind that. If you can get three things overlapping, three is not a magic number. Uh, sometimes people talk about, you know, threes, things happen in threes. Three just means it's confirmed. Two things are a coincidence. They don't quite come. Two things don't quite commit. But once the same thing has happened three times, it's like it's committed. It's a thing. 
And so I try and have things overlap at least three times. And you can't believe the amount of depth that three overlaps create. Even a line that goes behind another line, behind another line. Three lines that overlap. And all they are are lines in a drawing, for instance. All of a sudden, they're not three lines. They are three planes. And three planes have a lot of depth. So we add those elements into this disastrous painting perspective, overlap, and a sense of three-dimensional volume. And all of a sudden, that disaster of a painting that they threw away with a little you know, 15-minute paint over, five-minute, 10-minute, 30 minutes, whatever it takes, bam. And it only took you know, sometimes an extra 10 minutes of fine-tuning to turn a disaster into an inspiration. And so uh, that's the learning curve we've got to go through. And it's those very simple ideas of depth that so often saves paintings that do not have clarity. That's fantastic. So for the viewers out there, here's the challenge. Take an environment and make sure that you have those three things in there. And those are overlap, perspective, and what's the last one? Three-dimensional volume. Beautiful. And of course, if you want to take your learning even further, there's plenty of knowledge and lessons in all of Nathan's courses from landscape sketching and watercolor and gouache to environment design with Nathan Fawkes, designing with color and light and the composition class. All of these are fantastic for strengthening your ability to do this. And that's on schoolism.com. So thank you, Nathan.